So one of the things we use a lot in mycology, especially when you're doing massive grow operations, is liquid cultures. Now, I have a ton of videos on liquid cultures, but I'm sure you guys have heard me say when it comes to new cultivators, I persuade them to start using agar over liquid cultures just because it's so hard to tell when a liquid culture is contaminated. You really can't tell by the naked eye, so you have to put it on a scope or you have to test it out. And testing it out sometimes on grains and stuff like that can cause a lot of issues. It can make you lose money, and we're not here to lose money. I don't want you guys wasting supplies. So I always tell you guys to go to agar first just to make sure that the LC is clean. But what if I could show you an alternative to a liquid culture that pretty much has a 0% contamination rate if you guys do it the right way. So what I actually use is what I'm gonna show you guys in this video. It's called a Master Slurry Culture or MSC. So make sure you guys check out this video, follow along step by step. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's go. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on, Chip Team? First of all, I want to welcome you guys back to a brand new video. Now, if this is your first time here on Willie's World, welcome to the Chip Team family. Thank you guys for all your love and support. All the socials right there. If you guys want videos that you can't get on YouTube, you know, I have a probably one of the most ridiculous private libraries out there with step-by-step -step uncensored videos. Go check out my Patreon. Literally, there's over 100 videos in that private library and a ton of other benefits like our private Discord, you get a private Reddit, you get one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls with me, we do monthly Zoom calls as a group, we do a ton of stuff. So if you're looking for a family so you could start cultivating and extracting and you want people that you could trust, that you could bounce things off of, that you could source things through, then definitely think about becoming a Patreon supporter because that's the spot. I'm telling you guys, you will not regret it if you become a Patreon supporter. Tons of benefits. As always, all the social media is right there. If you guys want to give me a follow, I do a ton of giveaways. We just did a huge giveaway for Christmas. 12 days, 12 winners. And we're going to continue that every year for Christmas. But in between, I do a ton of giveaways. So make sure you guys go check out my social media. Yes, you guys see, I have two Instagrams. I have official TTF Willie and I have TTF Willie. Those are both my Instagrams. The reason why I have two Instagrams is just in case one gets shut down, I have a backup. You guys could follow either or, it really doesn't matter, but I am a lot more active on my backup page because I'm trying to build it up right now. My main Instagram page is already so big. I want to start building up my backup page, so I've been really active on there. So make sure you guys check out both. I really appreciate it. I also want to thank you guys for all your support. If you guys didn't see it, we actually hit high times. Yes, Trip Team family is in high times. They just did an article on me, the Trip Team family, and our brother, Philly Golden Teacher. So if you guys want to check out that article, it's a great article. They did a great job. You guys can go down below. I'll actually put the link to it in a pinned comment below, along with all the other links to different things like the Patreon and Instagram and all that good stuff. With that said, let's jump into this video because this is going to be a good video. Now this video is going to be broken up into two videos and the reason for that is I don't want to overload you guys with information on one video and I don't want to make this video too long. So we're going to break it up into two videos so that way you guys can follow along in real time and you guys can do everything step by step. So this will be a two part video series but trust me you guys are going to love this. So you guys know if you watch any of my older tech videos and things like that when it comes to new cultivators I try to push them away from liquid cultures. And the reason for that is even though we all use liquid cultures when you first start out it is very difficult and your chances of contamination are very high if you mess up at any of the steps when it comes to storing it away, when it comes to drawing liquid culture out and all that stuff. It could get contaminated at any point in time. If it isn't contaminated from the jump, it could get contaminated while using it. So I always tell people, I'd rather you go to agar first, get really comfortable with agar, learn how to use it, and then go to LC because every time you go to use an LC or you make LC, you want to test it out on agar before you start knocking up grains because if it's contaminated, you just wasted all that time, all those supplies, and that really, really sucks and it could discourage a lot of people. 
So I always try to tell new cultivators, use agar before you go to liquid culture. Now, one of the things that I've been developing over the years and using a lot in my own grow operation is master slurry cultures. It's pretty much the same exact thing as a liquid culture, but if you follow along what I'm gonna show you in this video, you guys will pretty much have a 0% chance of contamination if you do everything right and it's so simple. So pretty much the difference between a liquid culture and a slurry culture is a slurry culture is made from a solid. So when we say something like slurry, we're talking about mycelium that's growing out on a solid substrate or medium like agar or grains or something like that. And then we mix that with water to make a slurry. What a liquid culture is, is we're actually inoculating nutritious liquid. So it would be something like caro syrup or light malt extract or something like that in a liquid base. And then we inoculate it and let the mycelium grow in there. And then we draw out the mycelium to, you know, transfer over to our grains or whatever spawn we're using. Other than that, they're pretty much the same thing. They're both live mycelium on some type of, you know, medium or in liquid suspension. They're both the same exact thing. So when you guys transfer them over to grains, it's going to work the same exact way. You're going to have a ton of inoculation points with live mycelium, which means it's going to speed up your growth. Another great thing about liquid cultures and slurries is you guys could use isolations. So when we use spores, we have to go through the germination phase. We don't know what genetics are going to germinate. So it takes a lot longer and it's kind of a roll of the dice. Either they're going to be good genetics that germinate or they're not. And really you don't know. But when you guys are using things like liquid culture or you guys are using things like a slurry culture, you guys could really refine your genetics so you know every single time you're going to have great grows. And that's what you really want to do when you guys start to scale things up and you start to get into commercial size grows or bigger grows. You guys don't want to be taking chances that you're going to have a shitty run. You guys want all your runs to be good. So it's super important you use one or the other. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the simplest and best way to make a master slurry culture. It's so simple. So let's jump into this because I know you guys are excited and I don't want to waste no more time. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make some jar lids. So I have videos showing you guys how to make jar lids. So pretty much what you guys want to do is make sure you have a self handling injection port and a gas exchange hole that has some type of filter over it. Now for my self handling injection port and my gas exchange filter, I'm going to be using Micropose self handling injection ports and filters. I think they're the best. But if you guys wanted to use something like RTV and Micropore tape, that's perfectly fine. It will work the same exact way. Now, once you guys have your jar lids made and you have your self handling injection port and your filter on there, now we can move on to the next step. The next step is we want to fill up our jars with some agar. Now, I have videos on agar, so we're not going to talk about all the steps to make an agar but pretty much make the agar that you want to make. It doesn't matter what type of agar it is. It doesn't matter if it's PDA. It doesn't matter if it's LME. It doesn't matter what type of agar it is. You guys can make the agar of your choice. So for these jars, I'm going to be making my light malt extract agar. So pretty much what I do is I take 10 grams of light malt extract, 10 grams of agar agar powder and 500 milliliters of water. And I mix them all together and then we're going to fill up our jars. So I like using hot water because I want everything to dissolve. And then what I end up doing is I fill up my jars. So once you guys have your agar all mixed up and it's ready to be poured into the jars, now you guys just need to pour it into the jars. So what I like to do is I like to pour about 50 milliliters of agar mix. Now it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just eyeballing it. But I like to use the little notches that are on the side of the mason jar. You guys could get pretty exact with it. So I like pouring about 50 milliliters. Now, if this was agar plates, I wouldn't pour that much. But because we're making master slurry cultures, I want a little bit more agar than normal. So I usually pour about 50 milliliters and I suggest you do the same. Pretty much what you want to do is just pour that agar in there. And once you guys pour the agar in there, now you guys are going to put your lid on there with the jar ring. Fill up all your jars with the agar. And once you guys have all your jars filled up with agar, you can move on to the next step. Now that we have all of our jars filled up with our agar mix, now we're going to cover them over. So you guys could use aluminum foil, which is the regular way to do this. 
or you guys could use these really cool lid covers that Micropose supplies. They sent me a couple. So I've been using them and I really like them. It just makes everything so much easier. It doesn't cause any waste or anything like that. You're not using aluminum foil. And these literally just slide over and they work really, really well. But if you guys wanna use aluminum foil, just make sure you guys cover them over with aluminum foil and get them on there nice and tight. You guys don't want any steam to come up and start collecting on the lid of your jar. Now, once you guys have all your jars filled up, you have them covered over. Now you guys are gonna throw them in the pressure cooker for 45 minutes at 15 PSI. Now, if you guys don't have a pressure cooker, don't worry, you guys don't need one for agar. You guys could boil it to sterilize it. So in that case, you would take your jars and place them in water and bring them to a boil for 45 minutes. But in my experience, I like using a pressure cooker. I think it works the best. And if you guys wanna follow this video exactly, then you're gonna wanna put them in the pressure cooker for 45 minutes at 15 PSI. After the 45 minutes, you guys wanna shut off the heat and you guys wanna pull the weight off your pressure cooker easily and let all the steam out and try to get them out as fast as possible. You guys don't wanna leave them in there until it cools down because the agar will continue to cook and sterilize and it can end up burning the agar. So you guys wanna try to get it out of the pressure cooker as soon as it hits the 45 minute. But do this carefully. Remember, this is steam, it's hot. You don't want this to come up in your face or burn your hands, so be very, very careful. Now, once you guys have your jars out of the pressure cooker, just let them cool down. It's gonna take a few hours at least for them to cool down. Just let them cool down, let them solidify, and then we can move on to the next step. Before you guys actually bring these jars in front of your flow hood or anything like that, make sure you guys spray them down and wipe them down with some isopropyl alcohol. Really, really good. And then once you guys do that, you can place them in your clean space or your SAB, wherever you're gonna be inoculating these jars. Now, once you guys have your jars cooled down, they've solidified, you've wiped them down and put, put them into your clean space, now we could inoculate them. So when it comes to inoculation, you guys could use whatever you guys wanna use. You guys could use agar that's already colonized. You guys could use spore syringes. You guys could use liquid cultures. You guys could pretty much use whatever you wanna use. Now, if you guys use a liquid culture syringe or you guys use a spore syringe, you guys are gonna inoculate this right through the self-healing injection port. So you guys are gonna wanna wipe down the self-healing injection port with some isopropyl alcohol. You guys are gonna wanna wipe down your syringe with isopropyl alcohol. And then you guys are gonna wanna flame sterilize the syringe and then inoculate your jar that now has your agar in it. When you guys go to inoculate it, you only need to put a half to one cc of spore solution or liquid culture. You guys do not need a ton of liquid culture. You don't want to be in too watery in there. You want the mycelium in the spores to be able to get to that nutritious agar that's at the bottom. So you don't need to put a ton of fluid in there at this point. All you guys need to do is a half to one cc. Some people even use less. They'll just use a couple drops. Now I'm gonna be inoculating mines with agar. So if you guys wanna use agar to inoculate yours, you have to be a little bit careful because this is where it could get contaminated. So you guys wanna be working in front of a flow hood. You wanna be working in a clean space or in a SAB because now we're gonna crack open this jar and we're gonna inoculate it with some agar that's already colonized. This is the only time you run any risk of things going bad. So if you guys do the inoculation part, whether you're using spore syringe, liquid culture syringe, or you're opening it up to put agar, this is the most crucial point. This is where you need to be absolutely sterile and do the best job that you guys could do. If you can make it through this part, then you pretty much will have a 0% contamination rate later on. So make sure you guys do this really, really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my jar, I'm gonna wipe around the jar lid ring with some isopropyl alcohol. The reason why I'm doing this is just in case any dust or anything like that settled on the jar lid ring, when I go to crack this open, I don't want that dust or the mold spores to fall inside to my agar. So I'm wiping it down as a precautionary thing. Once I have it all wiped down and I'm using gloves, I got hand sanitizer on, my flow hood is on. Now I'm actually gonna take off the jar lid ring 
and I'm gonna place it off to the side. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my agar cuts ready. So I'm gonna cut my agar that I'm gonna be transferring into this jar. So I wanna have my cuts all ready to go before I actually remove the lid to the jar. Now I'm only gonna transfer in two cuts to each of these jars because you don't need much to start growth. So I have my two cuts ready and once I have my two cuts ready, I'm actually going to pull the lid off of my jar and I'm going to transfer these in really, really fast. You want to try to be as quick and as still as possible. You guys don't want to create a ton of air movement or create a ton of movements. You guys want to try to keep your movements as limited as possible. Once you drop the agar in there, put the lid back on, put the jar lid ring back on and it's all set. It's now inoculated. Make sure you guys are labeling everything you do so you know exactly what went in there. I actually inoculated these with some RDU. This is Red Down Under Penelius Sciences that I was actually gifted by my brother Zach. So shout out to you Zach if you're watching this. Thank you brother. They're going to a master slurry culture right now. So we'll be seeing what they do really soon. I'm really excited for these genetics. And pretty much you guys are going to inoculate all your jars the same exact way. Like I said, if you guys want to use the self handling injection port because you have a liquid culture syringe or a spore syringe, that's perfectly fine, but if you guys only have a spore print or a swab or some agar, then you guys are going to have to open up the jar to inoculate it, but you guys could use any inoculation method that you guys want to use. Once you guys have everything inoculated, everything's labeled, now we're just going to put it off to the side and we're going to let it colonize. So depending on what you're cultivating, the colonization temperatures are going to be different. So just, you know, it really comes down to whatever you guys are cultivating. So for these specific mushrooms right here, I'm going to let them colonize around 74 degrees. But if you guys are doing anything else, you guys might want it higher or lower. It really just depends on the specific mushroom. Now, once these fully colonize, that's going to be part two. So on part two, I'm going to show you guys the next steps when it comes to inoculating your grains and making a ton of inoculant without the chances of it getting contaminated. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, but that's pretty much the beginning stages to making a master slurry culture. And to be honest with you guys, I think once you guys start doing this, I think liquid culture is going to be a thing of the past. I don't think a lot of people are going to use it because I think you're going to find this a lot easier and a lot safer. With that said, I want to thank you guys for all your love and support. I'll catch you guys on part two. Thank you for everything you do because without you, there is no me. I'm Willie Michael. Do good. Be good. Live good. Namaste.